All right, welcome back everyone. This is Ebony, AKA Fit Mom Diva of Simplicity Health Style. And today we have Miss Kiata with us. Kiata, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm awesome. And if you guys stick around to the end, you will have an opportunity to get a complimentary gift. So let's listen to what Miss Kiata wants to share with us today. Kiata, can you start us off just so that we get to know you a little bit better and tell us one motivational quote that really gets you going and inspires you? Yeah, so right now in this season, I've really been relying on Romans 8 and 31. So I have my Bible, and I'm just going to read that real quick. Um, it says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And how does that relate to this season in your life right now? Well, you know, there are going to be those times where you're trying to go after something and you have those naysayers trying to tell you like negative things for whatever that might be. So it's like, if you focus on like, I know that God put this vision in me. I know that he gave this to me. So I'm going to block you out because this is his thing. I'm pursuing this. So he's for me. Yes. And many times other people around us don't necessarily understand what our vision is and what our goals are. And it really isn't for them to understand because they have their own path to walk. So if we can clearly hear and just obey and walk in whatever that is, we're always going to thrive. Sometimes, as we all know, that there could be external circumstances that get in the way along our path. So can you tell us about a time when you didn't necessarily see the light at the end of the tunnel and you had external circumstances but at the end of the day, you were able to see that goal or that dream through to fruition. Yeah, so um, I went to a university. That's where I got my undergraduate degree from. And my degree was in fashion, you know, not your typical thing that you would go to a regular university for. So going to LSU and getting this fashion degree and in hopes to have a job, but for three years, I did not have a job in my field. So it was very, very frustrating to have gone there for four years, spent all this money, and it's like, so where's my job? <laughs> yeah, and sometimes, you know, you go through four plus years of college and you're taking all these strenuous classes, getting little sleep sometimes, and when you're done, it's like, okay, so what do I do from here? <laughs> And it's particularly troublesome when you spend all this time and you can't find what it is that you're looking for in the field that you went to school for. Can you talk a little bit about that waiting time and what you learned through that experience and how long that experience was for you before you were actually able to secure something? Yeah, so like I said, my waiting time was three years, which to me seemed like forever, but you know, when you're young, it's really not that long. Um, but in those three years, it's like, it was good, even though at the time I didn't see that it was good, but now like I, I understand why I had to go through that. But in those three years, I basically had to do a lot of, um, research and, uh, like teaching myself, uh, because I realized that I was so dependent on like a teacher or a friend or just somebody I was like like kind of sort of desperate for for somebody else and it's like no you you can't be desperate and have said person to hold your hand because this isn't said person's dream this is your dream you have to be the one to facilitate your own dream and then once you start doing that work then everything else is kind of going to fall into place yes and you said something that was very key and that is to actually do the work if we have all this faith and belief that something is supposed to happen to us or for us and we don't do work, well, guess what? <laughs> You're not going to get where you want to be because we have to be able to put in the work and the effort. Very, very, very seldom do things just fall into your lap without you doing the work. And I think that that's sometimes people's biggest hang up. They look at something as, oh my gosh, this is way too difficult. And then they quit. And then they're looking back later on saying, oh my gosh, if I had just stuck with it, look at how much I could have achieved. But now I'm sitting here complaining about the way my life is, but that's because you didn't do the work up front. <laughs> so I think that that is, that is particularly key, especially when you've had a dream for years 
and some people since they were children, eight or nine years old, and they haven't been able to get that dream off the ground yet. Can you talk about those people that maybe they do have a dream and they're willing to even go forth and put in the work involved, but they don't necessarily have close family and friends that are able to support them in that dream. What kind of recommendations would you give those people? Yeah, um, so for anyone who doesn't have um, a very strong support system who understands their vision, that's okay because not everybody is going to understand what it is that God gave you to do. That just means it's not for them. And that's fine. Like you can't be upset that your friend, your sister, mom, whatever, don't understand or accept what it is that you're trying to convey and put out. You just have to first know how to pick yourself up. And then once you do that, you have to continue to pray to God every day, like while you're still picking yourself up and we, we always want to have like an accountability partner, which is great. So as you're picking yourself up, just be like, God, like, can you please send someone who is in my field, someone who's done this before me, just to come my way. And that's actually how I found my mentor. Um, she is in New York. Her name's Andre Duncan. And I just randomly sent out an email to this um this apparel group in New York that I'm a part of and was like, I just graduated from college. I'm really looking for a mentor and like, I want to have my own business and I really just need some help. I got some responses. People were like, oh yeah, but I charge X, Y, and Z an hour. I'm like a uh, mentor does not equate to <laughs> money per hour. So I was like, I'm good. It's fine. And then like, I think after a couple of weeks, um, under email back and, it started off as just a simple like send me an email and like I'll answer certain questions and after a while like it just kept going and going and going she really saw how much I wanted it and how much I could learn from all of her what 12 15 years experience yes and it's so easy these days to connect with people on social media and I don't know how many countless relationships that I've established over the last few years where there was no way I would have met these people had it not been for social media. I've developed online courses that one particular time I ran a group program, almost everybody in that group program was from a different country. And I hadn't been to any of those countries except for one, Jamaica. But I was able to connect with these people via social media. And I think that sometimes people downplay how much potential they could have with achieving their dream and even exceeding their dreams by just making relationships with people online. And I don't believe that social media is going anywhere anytime soon, do you? <laughs> so I think that using it the right way can be very helpful in getting your dream off the ground. And then also using it to connect with people in your local area. Because it's not that you have to meet people in another state or in another country in order to be successful. You can utilize social media to, to meet people that are right there in your local community that you still would have never crossed paths with and they're 15 minutes down the street from you. <laughs> I think that uh, using that as a tool and understanding that it is a tool and not your whole life is really something that can, that can allow you to have a more fulfilling life in a lot of different ways. Talk about a current challenge or some next steps that you have that is relatable so that people can feel like, okay, she's pretty much just like me. She's, you know, doing things that excite her and are fulfilling to her, but she's really just like me. And that gives me even more encouragement to continue on my path. Yeah, so... Um... Just whenever I finally got a job in my field, um, when we moved to Dallas back in February, a few months ago, actually, um, I was really excited. I was like, yay, finally got a job in my field. Woohoo. And then about 35, 40 days into my position, it's like, ooh, I don't think I like this anymore. <laughs> and not necessarily because, oh, like fashion isn't for me. It was just the particular position that I was in I was I was and still am like well overqualified for this job and 
it got frustrating to the point where either before or right after lunch, all of my tasks would be done and I'm just kind of like sitting there like, okay, what am I supposed to do next? I still have four or five hours left and I don't have nothing to do. So right. within that frustration, I reached out to um, an older lady who's in a different department that I work in and and I just um, asked her like, like if she can help me. And she took me under her wing and decided to like give me more training because even though I have this uh, degree experience, I still needed that like hands-on work experience. Right. So I basically just interned for her and someone else in what I call my um, dream position in corporate world. So I can just have that experience and continue to learn over people who have been in the industry for, again, like 10 plus years. Yeah, so again, it's looking at the people in your environment and establishing connections and making things work for you. I think that we can create our own opportunities sometimes and they're right in front of our face. You know, when I first moved to Florida and I realized that there weren't a lot of opportunities in the field that I went to school for, I said, well, this is where my interest lies. So what can I do to create an opportunity for myself where I'm able to thrive? And because I put a lot of time and effort into that thought process and then carrying out certain, certain things that I needed to do to make things happen, now I feel fulfilled. That wouldn't have occurred if I just sat back and said, oh gosh, this city sucks because they don't have jobs in this area. And, you know, I could have done so much better if I was still home in the Maryland, D.C. area because there's so much more opportunity. And so I sit and I sulk. <laughs> but there is always ways to think outside the box to create opportunities for ourselves as well if we want to take the time and the energy to do it and make those connections with people that can help us. That's always the key thing, if we're willing to do that. Yeah. What would you like to see happen next as far as collaborations? Because you have such an awesome, strong presence on social media. And I know that you're still growing and collaborating with people of like mind is usually key to people that value personal self-development. So what type of people would you like to be able to connect with and work on future projects with together? Yeah, well, um, if people want to take a look at my Instagram, they'll see how the grid is basically set up in um, like me posting a scripture from the Bible. And then I'll have just like regular pictures of either me doing something uh, in my field, like on my dress form or just something like that in fashion. Or I'll have a picture of me and my husband. But if you read the captions, I always try to be well thought out because I'm like, I'm not just going to post it. Sorry about that. Um, okay. I'm not going to just, you know, post something up here just to, to post it. I'm actually have meaning behind it. And it's always, of course, going back to God, um, giving him everything that I have, I, I put him at the center of it. So if anyone who is like a faith or Christian blogger values, like that's basically who I, um, you know, want to collaborate with. Awesome. And all of Kiara's contact information will be in the description box. So feel free to connect with her. And at the beginning of this episode, I also mentioned that if you stuck around to the end, you would have an opportunity to get a complimentary gift. You'll also notice my Nutrition for Busy Women Facebook group link in the description box. And we are not just talking about nutrition from a food consumption standpoint. We're also talking about it from a mind, body, and soul perspective. And if any of you want to share your success stories and your challenges so that other women around the world will feel like they're not alone, please contact me and let me know. And I would love to invite you to do so. I think that we spend a whole lot of time talking about our successes, but we don't also talk about some of the challenges along the way. So being able to connect with people that fall into the category of I'm struggling right now, or I used to struggle, but this is what I learned from it, I think can be very vital in us understanding that we just need to press forward. So I invite you guys to share this content and share your story. For anyone that would love 
to be able to also serve in any other way on social media and have awesome ideas that you've been looking for purpose-driven women to help support you, feel free to reach out. I'm open to new projects and ideas that I've never even, I've never even thought about before. Kiara, do you have any last words of encouragement that you want to share with us before we end? Yeah, um, something that I have to like keep reminding myself of is like, just because we live in this instant world, don't expect instant results. Like it's a marathon, it's a journey, it's not a sprint. Just want to encourage everybody to basically like just put your blinders on. Don't look at your neighbor's life and think that it's going to happen for you that quickly. And that it doesn't matter if that's in your career, or life, or just whatever it is. So that's basically what I want to share here for everybody. Yes, that is so key in this instant microwave world <laughs> where we expect <laughs> everything quickly at our fingertips. Understand that not everything happens overnight. And we can learn a lot in the process of waiting. Thank you all for listening to Kiara and I today. And I appreciate you for spending time listening and sharing this valuable content out to your family and friends that can benefit. And until next time, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of the day wherever you are in the world. And don't forget to always live simply, meaningfully, and purposefully. You guys have an awesome day and I will see you in our next episode.